I'm a little bit nervous about this just because I'm obviously I'm, I'm not Native American and uh, some of these things, uh, they're, they're important, but they're also really uh, sensitive stuff, but it's also really important to, to learn. So, okay, so hi guys, how are you? <laughs> so um, today I'm going to be making a Native American Indian fry bread with a Missouri pozole. And what I'm gonna do throughout this month is that it's actually Native American Heritage Month. And for someone that came from the East Coast of America, like I kind of felt like I should have really known more about this and I guess in general more about um, Native American uh, history. And so I thought what I would do through the month of November is to feature a couple of Native American Indian recipes that I have found through cookbooks, through blogs, through Native sites, and explore the food and the history with you guys. And so yeah, all of the recipes are actually really amazing. I think that you guys will really love them. I'm gonna go for it. Okay, so my first recipe is Indian fry bread with a Missouri pozole. And pozole, for a lot of you guys, you know it from um, Mexican cuisine, and it is that as well. Uh, I took it from a cookbook that I will be featuring later as well. So we'll talk about the pozole uh, later. I really wanted to focus on uh, fry bread for our initial opening recipe. Uh, one, because fry bread is probably one of the most well-known foods from Native American cuisine. Uh, but two is fry bread has this whole um, uh, history behind it that is really important. And so I think this is the recipe to kind of start off this series. Fry bread, it's, it's basically, you know, fried dough, super delicious. Um, a lot of native restaurants and like new, like kind of modern uh, native cuisines, they have fry bread in their menu. There's like, you know, like fry bread taco and just different creations with it. It's very delicious. I didn't know this before kind of looking um, into it is it was actually kind of a, it was a starvation food. So for those of you guys that don't know um, in American history, uh, starting around the 1830s, there were a series of forced removals by the US government onto native tribes. Usually it was moving a tribe from east of the Mississippi River, so from kind of eastern uh, US to a land um, in the west. You know, these natives were forced to walk thousands of miles across land that they don't know. Um, many of them were raped, a lot of them starved, a lot of them, you know, died from uh, disease. And so when the government did these forced relocations, um, what they found out was that after the natives uh, landed on either a reservation or at the internment camps, they didn't have enough food. They're not going to know how to get food, find food. They don't know the area. Just, you're not asking for good things. And so the US obviously had to issue these, you know, these starvation foods, which they give in times of, you know, extreme hunger, poverty, famine, uh, that type of a thing. It was things like white flour, you know, lard, shortening, um, sugar, coffee, stuff like that. Stuff that I'm not necessarily sure the, the, the natives were used to, but they got everything together and they, they made this bread. And of course, nowadays, if you speak to Native Americans now, they'll say, oh yeah, like I grew up with fry bread or I grew up with, I think sometimes they call it grease bread as well. Um, and usually they'll eat it in powwows and kind of get togethers. And so they will have grown up with it. Their restaurants will have it. And, and this is like their, it's part of their childhood, it's part of their memory. Um, and so it's confusing because it's something that, you know, it is synonymous with, with your childhood, but it also comes from roots that are extremely dark and bad. And I'm left, you know, a lot of the time is reading about um, these histories, I'm, I'm kind of left like, confused, confused about what to think about these things. Usually angry and, and, and confused about what to think about these things, but that's like, I don't know what to do about it. Um, 
And then of course with fry bread, because it's all, you know, refined, it's all processed, it's all fried, that's also not really good for your health. And in reading about, you know, um, reservations and, and just the health of natives, um, huge percentage of them obese with diabetes with you know um, a food related illnesses that I think um, really stem from the fact that they lost this bit of culture where they used to eat the foods that they used to eat on the lands that they knew and on the lands that they hunted and, and gathered and, and planted uh, into these places like these camps these reservations where they're blocked off from really like the rest of the world yeah so that that is kind of how we're going to start off this series i read is part of the culture uh, now and and chefs native chefs they're making amazing things with it and and so that is you know that is indian that is native american cuisine as well so all right let's head over to the recipe so this recipe comes from sean sherman's cookbook the sous chef and he starts off by boiling four cups of water with some corn cobs. And this is a nice way to use up the whole plant while still getting a lot of corn flavor. So I brought that mixture up to a boil and then cooked it on medium heat for right around an hour. And the liquid got so corn-like, it was amazing. The rest of this recipe is easy peasy. I have one small butternut squash that I've cubed, um, one tablespoon of sage, as well as two cups of hominy. Now you can soak yours beforehand. I actually just had the can on hand. So I use that and you're gonna cook it for right around 20 minutes up until the squash softens. And then we're gonna thicken it up with some cornmeal. I love thickening up soups with like a cornmeal or chickpea flour. So I have a half a cup of water along with a quarter cup of cornmeal and just mix that up until there are no lumps and then pour it into the stew. So once the soup has thickened, that is good to go. And now we're going to make our fry bread. So this one is from the Choctaw Nation website. They are based in, largely in Oklahoma. And the recipe is pretty simple. Two cups of all-purpose flour. You have a tablespoon of baking powder, a teaspoon of salt, and then finally, right around one cup of either water or if you want to make it more rich, uh, milk. And I've seen a couple of recipes based on just different tribes. So some will choose to make it more tender by adding things like lard or shortening, but that's really up to you. And you just want to knead this for a few minutes until it gets to a ball of dough. And it is pretty soft, but then you want to let it rest for right around 30 minutes before you start to fry.
so you want to have the oil heated to right around 350 degrees Fahrenheit and the process can be as casual as you want. Um, some people will just rip it and then shape it with their hands while some people might use rolling pins. So just dust the boards pretty liberally because again the dough is a little bit sticky. had a little extra sage so I just fried those up and then added it on as decoration but this guy is ready to go uh, to be eaten with your pozole. Well, that's it for me, everyone. I have a couple more of these recipes to go for November, and they all come with like really interesting facts about the food and about the history of the people. So I hope you guys continue um, joining me throughout November. As usual, if you wanna see more recipes like this, more types of these videos, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Definitely comment down below and I will see you guys all again next time. Bye.